Hello and welcome to another edition of The Monarchy with me, Samson Seas, right here on Press TV. We continue to bring you counter-mainstream stories that are linked to the one and only UK. Like last week, we will continue our journey into Scottish politics, should it become independent from Britain. There's also something else we are zooming in on today. Check it out. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So before we move on with today's topics, let's get a bite out of this week's headlines. It's UK time. A recent study shows an increasing number of university students in the UK are turning to the adult entertainment industry to pay for their studies. The research by Leeds University has found that up to a third of strip club dancers in Britain are students. The study shows the majority of the students are entering the adult entertainment industry to pay their way through a university course. The disclosure follows a decision to increase the cap on tuition fees to up to £9,000 a year for the first time in 2012. UK Prime Minister David Cameron has decided not to form a coalition government even if he falls short of a majority of parliamentary seats in the next election. The British Premier wants to fight the next general election in May on a clear promise not to sign a second power-sharing deal in the event of a hung parliament, where neither of major political parties has an absolute majority of seats. Cameron will make the commitment in the Conservative Party election manifesto. A top Whitehall security official has warned that British militants operating inside Syria pose the biggest terror threat since 9-11 when they return home. Charles Farr, head of the Office for Security and Counterterrorism in the UK's Home Office, said the security threat from those militants fighting against the Syrian government is the biggest challenge facing the police and intelligence agencies since the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. Earlier this month, British Immigration Minister James Bruckenshear also warned that the UK faces a major security threat from the militants who travel to Syria with amateur aid convoys and receive training by terrorist groups fighting the government of President Bashar al-Assad. Young people in Britain have been hit the worst by the country's economic crisis and have experienced the biggest drop in salaries, a British think tank says. The Intergenerational Foundation, IF, said in a report the median gross weekly salaries among those aged 18 to 21 in Britain have dropped more than 19% in real terms since 1997. Those over 50 have, on the other hand, seen a 25% increase in earnings over the same period. In addition, the report showed that the pay divide between younger and older British workers has risen by more than half since 1997, with those in their 50s earning 2.6 times more than the workers aged 18 to 21. In comparison, the figure was 1.7 in 1997. Britain's Metropolitan Police has spent over £5.3 million for policing the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been holed up for almost two years. According to figures released to the Huffington Post UK on Wednesday in response to a Freedom of Information request, the total cost of monitoring the South American country's diplomatic mission in the UK capital is estimated to be around £10,000 a day. The Met Police have been stationed outside the embassy in Knightsbridge, West London, every day and night over the past 20 months, ready to arrest the Australian campaigner if he steps out of the building. A British campaigner group has unveiled the amount of money the first heir to the throne Prince Charles pocketed last year in housing benefit payments. 
The campaign group Defend Council Housing said in a report that Prince Charles, Duchy of Cornwall Estate and the Crown Estate collected more than £200,000 in housing benefit payments for their tenants in 2013. Campaigners challenged the law based on which landlords are paid housing benefits, saying that the money enables the landlords to develop their property empires instead of helping poor people. According to the report, the Duchy of Cornwall pocketed at least £163,000 in housing benefit payments, while the Crown Estate received at least £38,539 by one council. British and American surveillance agencies teamed up to develop a system that collected millions of images from the webcams of unsuspecting and innocent internet users. The Optic Nerve Program, administrated by the UK's GCHQ with the assistance of the National Security Agency, routinely intercepted and stored those webcam images in secret starting in 2008. But these are least cause of surprise, as GCHQ employed two other vicious programs to meddle in other nations' affairs way beyond UK borders. Wayne Madsen of Strategic Culture sheds light on the so-called infinite curvature and mountain slope propaganda tactics in Ukraine. It was only a matter of time. The National Security Agency's British Five Eyes partner, the Government Communications Headquarters, GCHQ, has now made common cause with another creation of British intelligence, the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations in London. From the time of its creation in 1921, under the guidance of the British Army's Bureau of Psychological Warfare to the present time, the Tavistock Institute has been at the forefront of research into an application of targeted and mass mind control techniques. The latest tranche of PowerPoint slides revealed by NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden shows the similarities between the GCHQ's Joint Threat Research Intelligence Group, JTRIG's Human Science Operations Cell, HSOC. The very name, Human Science Operations, appears yanked right from the operational charter of the Tavistock Institute, which includes the ability to engage in full-spectrum domination by US and UK intelligence services, in other words, the two core members of the Five Eyes Alliance. The Five Eyes Signals Intelligence Alliance of the United States, Britain, Canada, Australia and New Zealand are adding psychological operations and Tavistock developed mind control operations to its traditional signals intelligence role. In Ukraine, the democratically elected government of President Viktor Yanukovych fell more quickly than either Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak or Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi simply because the Western corporate media fully cooperated in Five Eyes' efforts to activate armies of sock puppets with aliases who disseminated anti-Yanukovych propaganda and, with the assistance of the global corporate news media, pushed stories. So what we, we've seen happen in Ukraine is in the months leading up to this crisis, we had um, Russia and the government of uh, the democratically elected president, Viktor Yanukovych, subjected to a barrage of uh, propaganda uh, from social media, very similar to what happened in Egypt, uh, in, in uh, Syria, uh, in, in Tunisia with the so-called Arab Spring movement. Uh, we saw when uh, President Yanukovych, of course, uh, uh, decided not to accept this European Union deal on uh, bringing Ukraine closer to the EU, uh, that the uh, rhetoric, uh, the propaganda on social media was increased. Now, this can be directly linked back to the GCHQ JTRIG operation, which exactly uses these, the, these types of uh, social media to foment unrest in targeted countries, and Ukraine uh, was certainly a targeted country. Western intelligence agencies pushed stories through the use of Twitter, Facebook, Flick, and YouTube. These applications are part and parcel of GCHQ and NSA Computer Network Information Operations, CNIO. Outside the realm of technological warfare, JT Rig admits that it employs credential harvesting against foreign news agencies. 
In fact, spies and provocateurs masquerading as journalists were not only discovered filing phony news reports from Ukraine, but also from Venezuela during simultaneous anti-government rioting in that country. Fake journalists were also exposed in Egypt, Thailand, China and Russia. Two GCHQ programs that were likely used to bombard news organizations with propaganda from the Western-financed Ukrainian opposition are codenamed Infinite Curvature and Mountain Slope. Without independently verifying what was being disseminated by text messages, email, fax and phone calls, the global corporate media willingly rebroadcast and republished Five Eyes propaganda on the situation in Ukraine as fact. This included such canards as Russian special forces, Spetsnaz snipers shooting dead protesters in Kiev's Maiden Square. Actual reports had neo-Nazi Maidonovsky agitators on Maidan Square shooting protesters with the intent that the government security personnel would be blamed and that protesters were set on fire by police. As to the last item, the Associated Press transmitted a photograph of what was described as a protester in Kiev running away in flames. In fact, the protester was a Ukrainian policeman and his Ukrainian MBC police insignia could willingly be seen on his uniform's left sleeve. JT Riggs slides point to how network operations are used to support intelligence operations in the field. These operations are identified as infiltration, ruse, set piece, false flag, false rescue, disruption and sting. In the case of Ukraine, Western overt and covert agents infiltrated the demonstrators at Maidan Square. In some cases, counter-CNIO operations can be successful against Western intelligence agencies. The firing by neo-Nazi snipers on Maidan Square demonstrators qualifies as both a ruse and false flag operation. The overall goal of such an operation was to blame Ukrainian security personnel for the shooting deaths of demonstrators, and as far as the Western media was concerned, the ruse and false flag was successful. The Ukraine operation was also in many ways a set-piece operation. A set-piece is a predictable operation that has been successfully employed in the past. Certainly, the Maidan Square uprising was almost a carbon copy, but with much more violence, of the Western-engineered 2004 Orange Revolution in Ukraine. Other tactics employed by the Human System Analysis, HSA, Online Covert Action, OCA, personnel of GCHQ and NSA, are the setting up of targets in honey traps, the use of lures who use sex to entrap targeted individuals changing photographs on social networking sites using sophisticated Photoshop Lime techniques, establishing blogs purporting to be those of a target's victim or victims, and emailing and texting false and defamatory information to the friends, colleagues and neighbors of a target. These tactics bring to the Internet familiar physical dirty tricks operations used in the past by human intelligence field agents. Other areas where JT Rig and Tavistock have commonality are the use of herding and group dynamics to create groupthink among targeted audiences. The quickness by the general population to accept everything written and broadcast about the situation in Ukraine serves as a case in point. Only alternative media provided unbiased facts about what was occurring in Ukraine without the color of intelligence agency propaganda. Of imposing state of However, JTRIG has a rapid response mechanism for alternative news reports. It calls for the use of conspiracy stories to influence thoughts and behavior. Either alternative news reports are derided as conspiracy theories by the GCHQ and NSA influence operations organizations, or the intelligence agencies themselves put forward conspiracy stories to muddy the waters. I don't think GCHQ is working with the best interests of the, of the British government in mind. I think they're totally a subsidiary of NSA, and NSA is, of course, part of the U.S. intelligence community, and there are people inside the U.S. Defense Department intelligence community that want to see Ukraine and Georgia and other countries join NATO so they can bring NATO right up to the uh, Russian border. Recently, uh, a news photographer actually uh, managed to take a photograph of a of a classified British government 
document being carried by a senior uh, British government official that said that Britain was against economic sanctions, especially financial sanctions against uh, Russia for its um, operation uh, so far limited to Crimea, which is the headquarters of the Russian uh, Black Sea Fleet in Sebastopol. Um, now, uh, that is a clear indication that the uh, financial people, anyway, advising Prime Minister Cameron, uh, are not in favor of uh, any sort of uh, confrontation with Russia. I don't think the ca same can be said about GCHQ, which seems to be even ahead of NSA in using and uh, advocating uh, the use of uh, social media and propaganda tactics. The social disruption visited by the use of such practices in Libya and Syria resulted in civil war. Ukraine may also descend into civil war among competing nationalities and language groups in a manner similar to Yugoslavia. Apparently what we're seeing now is uh, uh, the Russian government consolidating its position in Crimea, uh, which, has a, uh, which is an autonomous republic of Ukraine. And uh, everyone seems to forget that it's a special status territory because it has a majority um, Russian population. Now, some critics of Russia's move point out that Crimea used to be uh, populated by Tatars, who uh, were forcibly relocated by Joseph Stalin. Many moved to the Republic of Tatarstan, and we now have a, uh, the largest oil refinery in Europe in Tatarstan uh, has a raging fire. I, I don't know if it's sabotage, but uh, it, it could be an attempt by some radicals, possibly supported by the Saudis, because they, we know what the Saudis do in Chechnya with, uh, with radicals, and, and they obviously have their contacts inside Tatarstan. Uh, this could be a, an act of sabotage in Tatarstan. But one thing the Tatars, uh, uh, some know, uh, is that uh, the neo-Nazis uh, have taken over in Kiev do not like the Tatars. They do not like Muslim people. These are Nazis. Uh, they, they, their, their, their colleagues are the uh, National Democratic Party of Germany, which is the neo-Nazi party in Germany that has been responsible for, for killing, uh, murdering many Turks, uh, German Turks and Turks guest workers in Germany. And, um, and uh, of course, the Tatars are of Turkic, Turkic extraction, Turkic descent. So why would the Tatars want to support a government in Kiev that's 30% made up of of uh, neo-Nazis who now have the defense ministry, they have the prosecutor general's office, and they have the um, Ministry of National Security. As the Scottish independence movement gains momentum, the topic of technicalities about such important moves are hotter than ever. Like last week, we try to review the Scottish independence manifesto. How will the referendum be run? Do a certain number of people have to vote for the result to count? There will be a chief counting officer who will be responsible for ensuring that the referendum is run properly and effectively. The chief counting officer will be the convener of the Electoral Management Board for Scotland. The chief counting officer will appoint counting officers to run the poll at a local level. Whatever the turnout in the referendum, if more than half of those voting vote yes, Scotland will become independent. If more than half vote no, Scotland will not become independent. Are there restrictions on how much can be spent on campaigning? The Electoral Commission has recommended spending limits that will ensure a level playing field between campaigners on each side of the debate. During the 16 weeks prior to the referendum, from the 29th of May to the 18th of September 2014, the designated lead campaigners will be allowed to spend £1.5 million each. Other registered campaigners will be allowed to spend £150,000 each. Political parties will be entitled to spend amounts based on their level of representation in the Scottish Parliament. Who will regulate the campaign? How much will the referendum cost to run? The Independent Electoral Commission will be responsible for regulating campaign activity. During the 16 weeks prior to the referendum, the referendum period, 
Campaigners will have to follow certain rules to ensure that the referendum is fair and that it commands the confidence of both sides of the debate, including rules on how much money can be spent by different types of campaigner and where that money comes from. The referendum will cost around £13.7 million. What will Scotland's flag be and what will happen to the Union flag? What will Scotland's national anthem be? Scotland's national flag will remain the Saltier or Cross of St Andrew. It is possible for the rest of the UK to retain the Union flag if that is what it wants. A decision on Scotland's official national anthem will be for the first Scottish Parliament of an independent Scotland following consultation with the people of Scotland. Songs such as Flower of Scotland and Scots Wa Hai will continue to be sung as unofficial national anthems in the meantime. When will Scotland begin negotiations to join the EU? How long would the process of EU membership take? Following a vote for independence in the 2014 referendum, the Scottish Government will immediately enter into negotiations with Westminster and EU member states to ensure that an independent Scotland achieves a smooth and timely transition to independent membership of the European Union. The 18-month period between the referendum and the planned date of formal independence provides sufficient time for discussions settling an independent Scotland's terms of EU membership. The negotiations to secure the transition to independent EU membership will be conducted between the date of the vote on the 18th of September 2014 and the 24th of March 2016, when Scotland becomes an independent state. The 18-month period between the referendum and the planned date of formal independence provides sufficient time for discussions settling an independent Scotland's terms of EU membership. In the current context of devolution, the Scottish Government has already demonstrated its capacity to transpose and implement the provisions of EU legislation. Dear oh dear, much too much happening here. Anyways, that's all we have time for this week. Remember, you can contact us and discuss these issues with us whenever you like. Our Facebook page is called UK Desk Press TV. Or if you prefer, you can send your emails to britain at presstv.ir. Don't let all that internet stooping put you off. See you next week, God willing. You've been watching the monarchy. The monarchy has been watching Britain. And we have all been watched by the GCHQ, the NSA, the CIA, and the rest of the alphabet. OK, I'm going now. Bye bye. Rock.